Welcome back. The climate crisis is an issue that is not going away. In North Dakota's lignite coal-fired plants emit millions of tons of the heat-trapping gas carbon dioxide, or CO2, into the atmosphere. And because of that, social and political pressure is putting the future of North Dakota's lignite coal production on the line. That's right. In our first segment of The Case for Coal, I look into a new technology that could allow coal-fired plants to continue doing business while also capturing carbon emissions. But critics say this new technology is a costly distraction that's not worth the financial risk and is moving North Dakota in the wrong direction. I think we need to move that way, otherwise we'll be shut down. Carbon capture and sequestration is the process of capturing carbon dioxide from coal-fired plants and storing it permanently underground so that it's not emitted into the atmosphere. State legislators are so convinced that carbon capture and sequestration is a win-win for North Dakota's coal, they're proposing $50 million into R&D in the state budget. This is really a wake-up call for all of us that we need to make sure that we uh, take the carbon out. It's just a part of life going forward. And the sooner we do it, the better. If we don't do it, we will have no coal-fired plants in this state after 15, 20 years from now. Right now, Blue Flint Ethanol Refinery near Underwood is in the process of completing their $7.5 million carbon capture and sequestration well, which will capture their 200,000 tons of CO2 per year, effectively making them a carbon zero facility. Steam, which is essentially waste from Coal Creek Station, will be used as thermal energy when it's transported here at Blue Flint, where corn is converted into ethanol. The CO2 waste from that process will be transported here about two miles away at a carbon capture well, where the CO2 will be injected about 4,200 feet into the ground and stored in a reservoir permanently. The groundwork for carbon capture and sequestration began 12 years ago, when now Senator John Hoven was then Governor Hoven. Governor, we actually passed legislation in 2009 after I'd set up a task force in 2008 so that we have the legal and regulatory structure to uh, do something like 45Q, or, or actually, I should say, to capture and sequester CO2 and do it safely and make sure it's sound for the long term. That's really important because now that we've passed 45Q, we're one of only two states in the country that can actually do it. And so it's been more than 12 years in the making. 45Q is the federal tax credit, which is the financial driver for these projects. It's $50 per ton of CO2 sequestered. It will allow power companies to pay back the upfront cost of retrofitting their coal-fired stations to do carbon capture and sequestration. Because you're talking probably hundreds of millions to put that technology in place. And, and so those loan guarantees are going to be very important to help them pay the cost to do it. And then they get a very good payback on that at $50 a ton for every ton of CO2 they produce and sequester. Project Tundra is an initiative by Minn Kota Power Cooperative to build the world's largest carbon capture facility at the Milton R. Young Station in Center, North Dakota. We're proposing to capture 4 million tons of CO2 every year. And just to give some context around uh, the, the magnitude of the carbon dioxide uh, captured, that is the equivalent of taking every pickup truck and every truck, every passenger vehicle registered in North Dakota off the road. Sonia Kay is running for the board of directors of Cass County Electric Cooperative, which takes power from Minn Kota. She's a critic of Project Tundra, saying the technology is a costly distraction. Let's talk about the exorbitant price of Project Tundra. We have already unwisely sunk $46 million into the research and development of this project. Uh, and according to economists, this project is going to cost two billion more dollars, which is twice what Minn Kota is suggesting on their website. Um, so far, the project has not attracted a single investor, to my knowledge, and, and why would it? Uh, the project is, in the words of a Minn Kota representative, expensive, it's complex, 
and it's risk intensive. Kay says there are only two other carbon capture and sequestration projects in the world, and they have both been financially unsuccessful. Kay adds Minn Kota is wagering their bet that the technology works on the backs of the consumer. What do we get for this money? Well, um, customers in Northeast North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota they get really expensive, inefficient electricity that will cost them a significant rate increase if this project fails to meet the requirements of the tax credits. Stacy Dahl tells Cakes News that because Minn Kota is a not-for-profit cooperative, they cannot leverage the 45Q federal tax credits themselves. So, they are currently in the process of forming tax equity partnerships with private entities who can utilize the tax credits to leverage for the capital needed for the project. And tonight on Cakes News at 10, I'll explain how carbon capture and sequester technology could help for the future of Coal Creek Station. And one thing that's very interesting, Alicia, is that there's a really large market for carbon capture right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. In the ag industry, they're looking at uh, turning it into a commodity. Yep. Uh, and Senator Hoven also told me that they can use this carbon to help with the process of extracting natural gas sure. in the Bakken. So it's a complex Very complex, issue. yeah. Absolutely. So look forward to seeing tomorrow's report yeah. on that. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. All right, Amber, let's